Didn't we have a good service this morning? And I'm looking for a good service tonight. We have our district pastor, Brother Mark Campbell, with us. It's so good to see him always. And we have missionaries, Brother Chris and Sister Kathy Swift, with us. They're missionaries of Western Europe and the Middle East. And I was, I've been looking forward to this service ever since our pastor told us about it. You know, I pray for the missionaries. See, I didn't know them, but God does. And I call on God each day to help the missionaries and help them to win many, many thousands and thousands of souls into the kingdom. And I pray for every one of you. Now, I cannot always mention your name, but see, God knows. And I pray for the entirety of the body of Christ. We are admonished by the Bible to pray for one another. And you know, Jesus is coming. And I believe it's soon. Let's be praying much for our lost loved ones and the lost ones throughout the world. You know, Jesus died once for all. And I thank God that I saw the light, that I was told about him. And may that good news of Jesus Christ get to every person on this earth before it's too late. And thank God for his many blessings. Now, before we, we uh, pray, I want to take your prayer praise reports and or prayer requests at this time. And I want to start on my left over here. Anybody? All you got to do is signify by lifting up your hand, Brad. Amen. Yes. Anybody else in that section before I move? This section right here, Pastor. Yes, amen. Anybody else in that section? Brother? Anybody else before I move? All right, how about this section? Anybody? On the right over here, brother? Amen. Yes, anybody else? Platform? Okay, I received a call today. My oldest sister, who is 85 years old, um, she has a lot of pain and she can't see her doctor until Wednesday but I, we know Dr. Jesus and she couldn't sleep last night because she, she was in so much pain and so she didn't make it to church so she requested prayer now I'd like for us to remember her in prayer that God will touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet and rid her of all that pain She's, got a, she's had a knee replaced and she's got back problems and all this. But the lady is 85 years old and God has blessed her, brought her a long way. And she believed that God's able. And, you know, without faith, it is impossible to please him. It takes faith. So let's believe when we pray tonight that God will answer all of these prayer requests. Anybody else, just before we pray, in case you thought of something, signify by the lifting of your hand. All right, would you stand, please? <clears throat> we know that God is able. Let's talk to him together. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, thanking you, Lord, for this day, this wonderful day that we have had, the service that we had this morning, and now the service that we're going to have this evening. We thank you for it. We thank you for being with us, for being in our midst for all blessings. We thank you for traveling mercies, O oh God. We thank you for supplying all of our needs and then some, O oh God. Thank you for allowing us to gather together in the name of Jesus and to lift up Jesus' name here this evening. May that name be lifted up in every heart. And Lord, we just thank you for every prayer you've answered, every need that you've met. We thank you for it. And we pray that you'll bless every part of this service and that you will take all of these prayer requests that were given in I know you remember every one of them. We pray 
oh God, that you'll take every one of them. We put them in your hands and we're trusting you to take care of them, that you will alleviate the pain and suffering that some are going through, all that's facing different things. We pray, oh God, that you'll help them through it. Touch them and help them, dear God, tonight. We ask that you'll do it right now. And Lord, we just ask that you'll bless our praise and worship team as they endeavor to do what you've called them to do, that you will anoint them, that you'll anoint us, that you'll anoint our speakers tonight, that you'll anoint everyone and may everything be done according to your will. May we lift up your wonderful name here tonight above all others. Thank you again, Lord, for allowing us to gather in your name and for all blessings and for the privilege to call you our God and know that you're able to do above and beyond anything that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Lord, thank you for loving us. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. We are so glad that you have come and worship with us tonight. Amen. Amen. In Proverbs 18, 21, it says that we have power of life and death in our tongues. So we're going to speak some life. I am the righteousness of God. I stand in covenant with him. And through this, I have new life, new anointing, and new power. I will not worry, nor have fear. Lord, your word and your spirit, they come for me. I am increasing in your knowledge and in your wisdom. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Through your covenant, I am healthy. I am blessed. There is nothing missing and nothing broken. You have made me a blessing, and everything I touch is blessed. Lord, I thank you that my family walks in obedience to your word and to your will. Take me, Lord. Take Ridgeville Church of God to the highest place in glory. Amen. Will you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Lord, we just give you praise and honor and glory tonight, God. Lord, we give you praise, Father God. We welcome you and Holy Spirit into this place tonight, God. We give you glory in Jesus' name we pray, God. We just lift you up and give you the highest praise tonight, Lord. We welcome you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Will you worship with us tonight? worship our king come let us bow at his feet he has a great things see what our savior has done see how his love overcomes he has done great things he has done great You conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. been faithful through every storm you'll be faithful forevermore you have done great things and i know you will do it again for your promises yes and amen you will do great things god you do great chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things oh hero of heaven you conquer the grave you free every captive and break every chain oh 
God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh, God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Hallelujah, God, unshakable. Hallelujah, you have done great things. Above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, hallelujah, God, unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things. You conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. God, you do great things. Amen. Aren't you glad he does great things? Amen, amen, amen. Wonderful things. Yes, he does. Amen. It is so good to have each and every one of you here tonight. And again, it is good, and as always, to have our district overseer with us in the house. And it's good to have our guests that will be bringing the word a little bit later. I'm not the only doctor in the house tonight. Sister Kathy actually has a doctorate, and so we give her honor. For those are great aspects of honor. Amen. If you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to turn with me as we get ready to take up the offering for our missionaries. Now listen, in John chapter 16 we'll be pulling the scripture but let me give you a couple announcements real quick don't forget we are still in our fast so please don't break it hold true we're almost there we're about to cross the finish line you, you know you just got a couple more days just just hold out if you haven't already finished your background checks please do so uh, it is customary here we do it every year so please get those in give it to sister Wilma or myself uh, we want you to there are a lot of sign up sheets in the foyer and so these are areas that you can work in the church. Now, if you say, well, Pastor, I already do it. Well, put your name down anyway. Number one, it'll look like people actually do something here. But number two, it'll help us know that you want to do it. For nothing in this place is eternity. You are not being held captive to what you signed up for nine years ago. And so we want to be able to do that. And me and I, we, we need to push our men's meeting up a week. So next Monday will be our men's meeting due to the Church of God prayer conference taking place at the end of the month. So I want to read you this passage. And the Bible says, these are the words of Jesus. These things I have spoken to you. And Jesus will speak to you. If you'll let him, he'll speak to you that in me you may have peace. I don't know what you're facing tonight, but there is peace in the Lord. In the world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. Don't you love that encouragement aspect there? Jesus is saying, man, you're going to have some tough times. But don't worry. Be happy. Ooh, ooh, ooh. No, I'm just kidding. But Jesus is like, man, don't sweat these things because, listen, what does he say at the end? I have overcome the world. And if he's done it and his word says greater things can you do in which I have done, then you and I know that we too can overcome the world. There is nothing God can't do. And if there's nothing he can't do, there's nothing you can't do in him. Amen. And so we live in a wonderful world. So rejoice. Hold your head up high. I know it may not look good, but there's a brighter day coming. There's a brighter day coming. Listen, I want you to grab your offering tonight, and I want to be able to bless it. 
and, and we're going to give unto the Lord. Now listen, our missionaries come to us again from the, they serve as the superintendents of Eastern or Western Europe. Now what does that exactly mean? Well, it covers a couple of countries, 13 countries. I told you it was a couple. And in addition to that, so half the money that you give tonight will go to that. And talking with the missionaries, Dr. Shuev runs a, a ministry also in Africa to help feed the hungry. And so when you give tonight, again, I know we sit here sometimes and think, well, I don't have much, but little is much when God is in it. And you're going to make a difference in somebody's life. People you may not ever meet on this side of heaven. But listen, it's okay. We want to show people that we love them and that we're our blessed nation. So, Father, as we hold our offering tonight and our tithes, Lord, we're blessed. And you told us that we can overcome the world. And so whether it's a financial issue, whether it's a marital issue, whether it's a spiritual issue, whether it's a work issue, and we feel like it is problematic or tribalism, Lord, we know that you will help us to be overcomers. We are more than overcomers by the word of our testimony. And so, God, you've done it once means you can do it again. And we know that there's nothing impossible with you. And we learned this morning that you do, in fact, still answer prayer. And so, Lord, we know that these missionaries have come not to try to pick the wallets of your people, but to speak about how God is moving in countries that we may never get to set our feet on. But through the continuous support and the linking arm in arms in a unity to fight the battle that the Lord has said that he would win for us, Lord, we get a part to play. And so whether it's a lot or little that we give tonight, God, we know that you will bless it for it is going to the kingdom's sake. And Lord, we pray that every child that receives food or every child that hears the, the message of Jesus Christ, that it would ponder within their heart and give their heart to you while there is still time because we're all about expanding the kingdom of God. So bless that which we give to you tonight. Move and multiply it for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you remain standing as our usher serve you? When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will. I'm not backing down from any giant. Oh, I know how the story ends. Yes, I know how the story ends. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. 
But the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good you turn it for good and I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you Lord you take with the enemy turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good sing it with us you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good yes you turn it for good For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. about you but I'm so glad and no matter what I'm facing amen that he is the one that can take care of it amen Lord we just thank you father that we can come before you Lord and we can offer our our issues to you God and you're willing to help us with a with a victory and that you can turn our circumstances around and use it for our good. Amen. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on
blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. concerned with everything that you have. There's nothing that he has not already ordained to come your way. Every battle you face has been ordained by God. And if he's ordained you to fight the battle, then he's equipped you to win it. Don't worry. He's got you covered. Amen. What a great God we serve. Listen, let me just give you a little background to our, our missionaries tonight so that when you look at them, you don't have to try to figure them out. Listen, they're from the U.S., so you'll be able to understand what they say unless they speak German, French, Italian, or whatever other things that are out there. It, you know, I took a little French in school, but not enough to hold a conversation with them. But they've been traveling all their life abroad. Their little bio says... You know, the father sang in operas and concerts. So as a child, they were immersed in many languages, learning the fluency of Dutch and French and later German. They've studied Greek and Hebrew, which we all should because that's in the Bible. <laughs> Old English, uh, whatever that is. Uh, I'm just kidding. Latin, Spanish, and Italian. But listen, here, here's what I love. They were inspired by a family of journalists and a career military to serve in the military and become a writer. You don't know what inspiration you'll give somebody. Not everybody will serve the military, but you can serve the army of God. The background was not a religious one. It holds a, an MA, a master's in English. And the Lord interrupted my thinking. I found out that Jesus was real. How I many of you know Jesus is real? Amen. Amen. While in the military, I was a freedom outreach minister, ordained in the church of God as a bishop and graduated from the Pentecostal 
Theological Seminary in Cleveland with a Master of Divinity in 1985. He later became a chaplain. While in graduate school, God gave him a vision and a prophetic timetable as to the fulfillment of when he went to teach at the European Bible Seminary in Germany. And this led to an appointment as a missionary in the Netherlands. He served as an education coordinator and later as an overseer. They've taught at Lee University. Between appointments, they've gone to many other places. The expanding of the, the Netherlands and French, or France, not French, but France here, and listen, in crisis in their life, our dear brother experienced something many of us hope to never do, and that's the loss of a wife. He continued yet to still pursue the calling of God. See, I don't know what tragedy has struck you, but it's not time to give up because of tragedy. It's time to keep going. So in 2011, he met a widowed lady in Africa. Some of you ain't got a husband or a wife. You might need to go overseas to find one. And Kathy and him were married, and they've been appointed to serve as our superintendents in Europe since 2012. It is an honor today to surrender the pulpit to individuals that love God, love the people of God, and more importantly, wants to see others like us win souls no matter what. Would you give a warm welcome to our guest couple today and allow them to come and minister to you and I? Bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you. You can all sit down. <laughs> We're so glad to be here and meet the good folk here at Ridgeville. A uh, uh, hundred years ago, at least, uh, I was sharing with the uh, pastor when we drove up. My late husband of many years ago, he and I spoke our first ministry uh, meeting, service, whatever, at a little bitty town called Ridgeway, Illinois. And he spoke, uh, it was his first sermon, and he spoke about 10, 15 minutes, and uh, he sat down just as quick as he could, and then the pastor got up and uh, retired from the <laughs> congregation. Uh, uh, and But it, it was a... Uh, Wonderful time, and the Lord blessed us, and I'd never thought as a young lady with two little youngins that someday I'd live in Africa. And then I used to pinch myself and say, I live in Africa. I'm so excited. I'll tell you that about later. But then this feller, how dare him, after I'd waited forever and ever, and then he had the audacity to pull me out of Africa. And now we travel so many places and meet so many precious people and see God moving across Western Europe. I've got it. I've got it. Oh, you have it. Yeah. Well, you heard it from the source. But yes, uh, it's, it's been an exciting journey. But we want to start tonight by thanking Pastor Charles and, 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 his, this, right and this young man next to him. Uh, I think you all know Pastor Mark Campbell for this wonderful friend. opportunity. And, and of course, Sister Betsy and all of you for the privilege of being here tonight. We thank you so much. And it is an honor and a blessing to be here I also was excited to meet some beautiful French people, some young French people in the church here tonight, Phil and Hélène. But it's bonsoir, not bonjour. No, it's bonsoir. Bonsoir, it's night. Yeah, it's because it's <laughs> night. Later on, it's going to be bonne nuit. Yeah, I, and, I uh, well to remember the one thing. So we're so excited. In fact, what I would like to do, if it's okay with, with you, is go ahead and show the two videos. I, I think it would be fine. And then we can talk some more now, about... Now, y'all, uh, just be at home. Because we are, okay? And what you see is what you get. And we're going to let God have his way. All right? Amen, amen. Okay. 
So thank you. If you could run those two videos, we'd appreciate it. Can we get some more volume on that? Because they're dying of AIDS. That was the reality of my life when I lived in Kenya, Africa. And today, because of that, in that little village, we have continued a feeding project. We have a humanitarian project which aids in all their everyday lifestyle, as well as we support five to six families besides three homes of the boys that I mentored, they have opened up their homes to orphans themselves. One young man is an evangelist, and yet he has four siblings that he takes care of. It's because of you that our life is touching many others that we may never see. It's because of you that we continue the projects of feeding 3,000 plus meals every week and I want you to know that during COVID time, we didn't stop. We fed the entire village, thanks to partners like you. The entire village, we finished and made a parsonage for our pastor with our church compound. And, and now we have completed three roofs on three of the large Sunday school rooms and started a preschool. We are already past one year of having that preschool of 20 plus children, so now, we have seven families that we support. It's because of you. It's because of you and your love for the harvest that God is doing great things in Kenya, Africa. Thank you, and God bless. COVID has not stopped the harvest in the region of Western Europe. I am Bishop Chris Swift, and this is my wife, Dr. Kathy Watson Swift. And we're so grateful to be here with you for the next two years. God has given us a vision of restoration, renewal, and a reset. And our people are very excited. We are seeing a harvest already. We are a church on mission to accomplish the finished commitment. And recently we have seen how many credentials? 144 credentials in Spain. Just in Spain. In spite of the difficulties, the churches are growing and we are seeing churches planted. That's right. We have five new plants in France. Yes, in Paris, the Sun to Light Paris project, we have five churches. In Amsterdam, we have a new building. Yay! We're going to see a new beginning in all of our countries. I am so excited. Just in May, we were able to be with three of our countries in national conventions. They had not been together in over two years. It wow. Makes, it makes such a difference when we can meet together and worship God in person. And, and our, the can our women across Western Europe are excited. We are soon to have a release of our very first devotional book. The ladies are coming together to see the harvest and touch a world that nobody else has touched. The church is on fire, and we thank God for the prayers and partnership. That That's you. Thank you for your partnership. Thank you for who you are in our lives. Well, uh, I'm not sure where to begin tonight, uh, except just to start by thanking you for your love for the harvest. And that starts right here in Ridgeville. Amen. And of course, uh, throughout the uh, Charleston, Somerville area, 
thank you for your faithfulness and, and also for your love for the harvest around the world. So we want to thank you tonight, first of all, and tell you how glad we are and how honored we are to be here tonight. I, I want to ask the children, is there any children out there? I, I'm a child. Are you a child? We're children of the king, aren't we? But I want to ask you something. You see this? What have I got? Boys and girls, what have I got? What is this? Is it a water bottle? Well, but it's got, is it half empty or is it half full? What, what is it? It's half what? Empty? You think it's empty. What do you think, adults? Is it half empty or is it half full? You know what? I think it's half full. If we, if we look at this, this just, this just looks like good water and, you know, mm. when I get thirsty, I drink water. But do you know what? Jesus has water that is like nobody else's water. It's living water. And, and it's different than this. You know, we have to keep drinking this so that we're, so we're not thirsty. But Jesus said to that lady once upon a time at a well, he said, if you'll drink the water I give you, it's living water. And you'll never be thirsty again. That's because we let Jesus live in our heart. So every time you pick up a bottle of water, you think about living water that's found in Jesus. He loves you. Don't ever forget it. Amen. Amen. And that's one of the reasons I love this lady is because she loves children. Anybody here love children tonight? Look at all these beautiful kids here tonight. Uh, as a matter of fact, before you were, went to Africa as a missionary, you were a children's pastor. And what, what happened to that church in Atlanta after the children's ministry began to grow? Well, it, they, um, they took ownership of it, and the Lord multiplied it, and I didn't even have to be there. They worked me right out of a job. Isn't that something? That's what we're supposed to do as leaders in the church. We're supposed to groom and help and disciple, and that's what we do in Western Europe. That's right. Disciple people so that they can keep on keeping on, right? And that's what you're doing in, with your youngins, with the little ones. And you're learning and teaching them because that's our church, folks. You win the youngins. You'll have a church beyond your imagination. I minister to about mm, 400, 450 every week in the bush in Africa. And most of them were children and teenagers. And you, that picture you saw of me with a bunch of boys, those boys were 13, 12 years ago. Now they're men, and guess who's carrying on the work in Africa for me? And I'm not even there. How dare them do that? They did it without me. That's what God wants you to do. One of those, one of those young men was a troublemaker, wasn't he? <laughs> we, how many? We know there's a lot of troublemakers, amen? D didn't the teacher say that he would never amount to anything? Oh, that was Washington? Yeah. Washington was... Uh, yeah, he was a troublemaker, but he was really good. And he's the one that God healed of fourth stage TB. He was bleeding in the nose and the ears and the mouth. When I left one time, I had to come back for raise some support because the pocket was empty again. <laughs> and I didn't know if I'd see him again, but I called prayer. Now, prayer changes things, folks. If you're determined to hold on to God's word and what God says, it'll happen. Because when I went back, Washington was healed completely. And guess what? Today, Washington is one of the main forces at that beautiful church that you saw that we dedicated because of many people. We built that and dedicated in 2014. It's the best 
Church of God building in all of Kenya, Africa. That's what they say, not mom. So he's the pastor's right hand. What about another troublemaker that you had to banish from the compound? Oh, my word. He was a stinker. And he was listening to all the occult across the village. And his mama and his daddy, they, they too were in that arena and I finally I said one day at the edge of the yard I said now listen Fred you can't come back in he said what I said you can't come into the yard and play games with us after we work all morning you can't play in the afternoon anymore but mom I said no you're old enough to make a decision you know right and wrong and you know what's happening on this yard is not bad. It's good. He said, yeah, I have fun. I said, mm-hmm. And have I ever told you anything but love Jesus and be good? No, Mom. I said, then make a decision. You know what he did? He made the right decision. And today, he's an evangelist. And today, in December, he took a whole, he took 150 people from Nairobi and drove five, six hours to Layla in the bush where I used to live. And he held a crusade. A crusade on the schoolyards. And guess what? Over 50 people gave their lives to the Lord. Hallelujah. (laughs) But that's the same thing that's happened in Western Europe. I just wanted you to, I wanted to make one point. She said that I took her out of Africa. (laughs) We're still working in Africa. Oh, yes. But the people that she trained and discipled for eight years, she lived in a mud hut with no water and no electricity. But that didn't stop her. And I worked in the fields. But she went ahead, worked <laughs> in the fields. She was a farmer, and but she was a discipler. And those young people that she discipled, one of them is a pastor of a church. Seven of them are in the ministry. She mentioned a couple of examples. Uh, I, I want you to know that the work in Africa continues. 16 so we, years now. And now I started with 20 feeding in my yard because I couldn't eat if they were hungry. And now we feed over 3,000 meals every week, and we've put hundreds through school, and we disciple, and we do anything and everything we can. I started with one cook, and now we have five. Started with a few little youngins, and now we got a bunch. 350 every week we teach and help in that local school and the other church school. But this is what we're doing in Western Europe and in Africa, and and we thank God that we can be the hand extended of the churches here in the United States that partner with us. Uh, The exciting thing is that you can train and disciple people to do much more than you can do by yourself. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? That's right. If you can train and disciple, that's what Jesus did, isn't it? He took 12 people, and I talked to one young man this morning who said, you know, Uh, I don't know a lot about the Bible. I'm not a great scholar. I haven't studied that much. But I've watched men of God, like uh, Pastor Mark and and, uh, other pastors and leaders, and I have learned from them. Well, guess what? What did Jesus do? He took 12 people, and and actually I think all of them were just people that worked with their hands. They were uh, fishermen and different people They were everyday people just like us. everyday people. And, and the, oh, the scholar came along later, and he had to unlearn most of what he had learned before he could be useful to God. Amen? Amen. And, and Pastor Mark was just talking today. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know and the power of God. Amen? It's who you know. So we Hallelujah. thank God that this has been our work in Europe and in Africa is to find people that have a heart for God and to give them the training that they need and the language that they have. And this feller is very um, careful not to say much about himself. But let me just tell you, first of all, he was an atheist. He didn't even believe that Jesus was real, did you? No, I didn't know Jesus as a child. You didn't? You never even heard of a story about Jesus? Well, I think we went to church once. My parents went to church because my grandmother believed. And so... It, I think it was Christmas or Easter. Ever heard of people like that that go to church at Christmas and Easter? Wow. And I did hear a story about a man that fell off a horse. So one day when I finally got on my knees and I said, God, I'm tired of being an atheist, but I don't believe in any of the other religions. 
But if you're real. And I know you're not. That's what you said. And I know you're not. But if you're real, will you show yourself to me? And I got up off my knees and I didn't know what to do next. You see, I didn't belong to the church of God. I didn't know you beautiful people. And nobody told me how to find Jesus. And that's Western Europe. And that's the people of Western Europe today. So many of them have, don't have a clue. But so what? many of them have heard about church. They've maybe baptized as a, as a baby, but they have no clue how to find Jesus Christ. And what did you do? So, folks, I'll be very honest with you. This is embarrassing. But I went to a church, and I sat there, and I thought, if I don't have a horse, maybe I'll fall out of the pew, and I'll hear a voice and see a light. That's how little I knew about finding Jesus. Well, needless to say, for two weeks, I sat there in that pew every night, and I didn't fall out of the pew, and there wasn't a light, and there wasn't a hand that knocked me on the floor. Nobody knocked you on the floor. Nobody knocked me on the floor. But I did, uh, I kind of gave up on trying to find God myself, and then God sent someone who knocked me off my uh, horse in a different way, <laughs> a gorgeous young lady. Not me. <laughs> and, and I didn't know I was going to meet an even more beautiful lady later. But at that time, I've, I found out she was a Christian one day, and I gave my heart to Jesus because I was so tired of fighting with God. And you know what? All of us have a story. I'm not even supposed to be standing here. You see, I'm an, I was an unwanted, unknown baby in a womb told the mother to have an abortion, get rid of that child. If you want the money in the family, you need to get rid of that child. But you know what? God had a plan. And here I stand because the Lord knew that my life down the road would do so many different things, and I didn't know it. I didn't know that I'd ever go to Africa. I didn't know that I'd meet this wonderful man. But before I ever went to Africa, we traveled all over the United States in the first marriage and did all kinds of things in ministry. And, and I helped do lots of things. And I thought that was wonderful and raised three wonderful youngins. But then the Lord chose to take him home. And for 23 years, I was a widow. And for 23 years, I kept on doing what God would tell me to do. It wasn't easy. There's a lot of battles I went through. And I'm going to share just a little bit about someone that went through battles. But I just want you to know that there's no stopping place with Jesus. Yeah. We got to keep on keeping on. We cannot stop because we are living in harvest time not coming harvest we're in harvest and this this lighthouse right here can do more than you could ever imagine you just got to get a hold of the hand of god and go do what God says. Don't ever come to church without somebody in your car. Bring somebody. Bring the neighbor. Knock on that door, and it takes 13 times to invite someone before they'll come. 13 times. Bring a youngin. Bring a little one, and then they'll bring mama and daddy and grandma and grandpa and cousins and aunts. And all of the family will follow that youngin if they're happy at church. Well, I've started preaching, and I'm not even there yet. So we thank you for allowing us to share a little bit about what we've been doing, what God has been doing, really, uh, through us. What, what's happening with the young people in Western Europe? You know, uh, that's the exciting part. We are seeing an outpouring of the Holy Spirit among the young people. Uh, just recently, we've had, uh, of course, COVID kind of stopped things in their tracks for a while. Yeah. But just recently, we had some meetings in, in Spain. And hundreds of young people have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Oh, my word. And they've been praying for that about 20 years. Yes. And it was such an overflow. The Holy Ghost just moved across. And there was not even room for other young people to come into that building. There was so much hunger and thirst after the Lord. We are so excited. The Netherlands is getting ready to do something great. 
Watch yes. out, Pastor Mark. Yeah, we're going to be talking to Pastor Mark about that. They want to have a, a special meeting for the young people in the Netherlands. We've seen an outpouring of God's spirit in France and in Belgium. We have hundreds of young people in Belgium that are uh, finding the Lord and being discipled. In and our youth... Uh uh, pastor for Western Europe. He's been traveling to several of our countries and, and everywhere he has a meeting with the young people, the Holy Ghost moves every single time. But you know what? Those things can't happen if there's not people like you that pray. It just can't happen. We can pray and that's a good beginning. But when there is unity in prayer from here, from there, and where we are, then God, he moves miraculously. But I want to share with you tonight something that God has laid upon our hearts. You know, one of the things that, that we have to do as leaders is we have to hear from God. Amen. If we want God to do something in our churches, in our, in our people of God, as leaders, we have to, first of all, hear from God himself. And sometimes as leaders, it's a little bit discouraging because sometimes you get beat up a little bit as a leader. And sometimes you don't know which way to go. We just got beaten up a little bit by that COVID a while back. It, it beat up some churches. And I'm thinking about an example in the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Uh, one of the greatest kings, the greatest king of Israel, really, King David, didn't always start out as a mighty king. Uh, actually, uh, there was a time that David was uh, running for his life and trying to escape death and, and many times came close to death because he was pursued by a king who didn't even belong in the position he was in. And we see in 1 Samuel chapter 30 that uh, things went from bad to worse. <laughs> he was hiding in a cave. <laughs> David had actually been given a city called Ziklag and he had been told you could stay there while you're uh, having this problem with this king that is trying to kill you, you can stay there and, and you'll be safe. And uh, so he, he and his wife, uh, his children, his family, and all of the people that were fighting with him stayed there and, and they were in safety. But one day David was out uh, doing what he thought God wanted him to do. He was uh, fighting for the Lord and, and fighting to... And he took them in. And he took them in with him. And while he was gone, the enemy came into the camp and took away everything that God had given him. His, his family and, and all the families of the men that were with him and burned the city behind them, and it was a total destruction. And that's kind of what re it reminds me a little bit about this COVID epidemic. It, it really has destroyed a lot of people, destroyed their lives, and, and, and caused people uh, to feel like they've had defeat and, and problems in their lives. But what did David do? Here's where we see the difference between a man of God and a man that does not know God. Or a woman of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that <laughs> correction. That's important. Where Saul goes to a medium, you know, this, this evil king that's trying to kill David is just the exact kind of leader you don't want to be because he goes to the wrong place for the wrong information. He goes to a medium and he gets in big trouble for it. And, and really does not get an answer to his problem. But what does David do when his house is burned, his house is burned to the ground? We've been talking about people in all these hurricanes and tornadoes leaving their, losing their houses. David lost everything. And his men wanted to kill him. And in fact, the people that he was supposed to be leading wanted to kill him because they were blaming the leader for what had happened. It's your fault because you left, you left uh, our women unprotected. It's your fault. You took us out there and we weren't here to take care of the village. It's your, isn't it easier for us to point fingers and blame others in situations instead of saying, oh Lord, help us, help us know what to do. Help us, give us answers. What so, happened? So David, first of all, they wept, and of course they wept until they had no more strength to, to left to, to weep. And then uh, David said to the priest, the son of Ahimelech, he said, bring me the ephod. So, and then David inquired of the Lord. You see, that's what we should do when things are bad in our yep. lives. Yep. When everything goes south and all of our plans are, are set aside and, and even fail, 
David inquired of the Lord and he said, what should I do? How should I deal with this problem? And so he went to the right place. He went to God. And God said, pursue the enemy and take back (laughs) what the enemy has stolen. How many people here tonight would like to take back what the enemy stole in the last three years? Amen. Whatever the enemy's taken away from you, how would you like God to restore? Amen. Maybe in a different form some, in some cases, but how would you like God to restore the blessings that you had before and even more? And so what did David do when God said go? David went, and what happened? <laughs> Every single thing and every person that was taken, they all were restored. Everything was restored. You know, not just jewels, not just the animals, but the women and the children and everything that the enemy meant for harm, God brought back. It's time for reset, folks. It's time to start again and believe God like we've never believed God before. It's time to let God (laughs) direct our lives and help us just like David, just like somebody else in the Bible, like 2 Chronicles, the 20th chapter, when in the Bible, forgive me, I don't like phone Bible, but I didn't get my real Bible with me. To, I know it's real on here, but I don't like it. I want to hold the book. But looky there. You see that? Yes, I see You know it. that king? Jehoshaphat. Yes, yes that ma'am. king. He defeated Moab and, and Ammon, and, and he was doing great things. And then all of a sudden... What happened? He got this word that the armies, the enemy's armies were after him. And they were coming in to take everything that Jehoshaphat had. So do you know what he did? He ran and hid. And he, he went over here and he hid all by himself. Is that what he did? That's what we'd like to do sometimes. <laughs> I think some of us would like to do that sometimes. <laughs> but he didn't. He went before the Lord, and he had the people come and worship. That's what they did. They worshiped. And while they were worshiping, the Lord allowed someone, a prophet, a man of God, he heard from the Lord. And what did he say? Uh, I got to find it. It's keep going here. Everybody, the youngins, the little ones, the adults, everybody was standing there. And he said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who would live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord would say. Now, I'm speaking to somebody in this house or maybe the house. said, do not be afraid (laughs) or discouraged because this vast army, and this is a... For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, verse 16, tomorrow, march down against them. Now, wait a minute. When God works for us, you mean we still have to go out there and do something? I thought God just did it. Zap him, Lord. Take care of it. Is that what happened? You tell me. (laughs) That's not what happened. He had direction from the prophet. He said, tomorrow, march down against them. Now, he had to go against the enemy. Amen. They will be climbing up the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge. Now, the Lord is specific. He tells us exactly what to do if we'll listen and if we'll hush long enough for him to talk to us. And he told them, he said, you're going to find them and take up your Position. Now, what's our position, folks? On our knees, in worship, and God will do what we need done. He said, take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Don't be afraid. Do not be discouraged. 
Go out to face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Every age, every season of life, we have different battles we have to face. Every one of you have different battles. Even the youngins in school, they have battles. Parents have battles. Pastors, leaders, children's workers, media, dear Jesus, bless you. We have battles. We all have battles. But the battle's not ours. It's God's. But you have to take your position. You have to face it head on. My daddy, he's gone to be with Jesus a long time ago. We weren't church-going folks. I was one of those heathens. Mm. Went to church when it felt good, or Bible school, and that was it until Jesus got a hold of my heart when I was only, mm, almost 18. But Daddy used to say to me, Kathy, life is hard. You have to face it head on. You can't go over it, and you can't get under it. You face it head on and deal with it. Well, then I met Jesus. And then I took what Daddy said and what the Word says, and I put it together, and that's my solid rock that I live by. When battles come our way in Western Europe, when they say, you can't come into this city, you can't share the love of God in this place, the battle's not ours, it's God's. And we pray for open doors. And we pray for avenues that we can't open. But the Lord has promised that if you go where I tell you to go, if you keep me first in your life, I will deliver. I will open the doors that no man can shut. Hallelujah. I will do the impossible. He said, if you have faith, as a grain of mustard seed. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? I mean, it's, itty, it's, it's like sand. You know, itty bitty, itty bitty. And if you have faith, <laughs> like the grain of a mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, go, get out of here. And it'll be cast into the sea in Jesus' name. Yes, we have to face things through our life. Jehoshaphat didn't get to go around it, did he? He had to lead the people right up to the top of the mountain. And as soon as they crested the mountain, they saw that the enemy had already defeated themselves. And he got to reap the reward. Because the battle wasn't his. It was God's. You but know, the enemy's tactics is fear. And, you know, that sometimes happens in Europe. For example, a lot of our countries, there's a lot of Catholicism, and a lot of people think that they have a knowledge of Jesus Christ, but they don't really understand him as a personal Savior. And so when you're in an area like that, it's very difficult sometimes to reach the people. Oh. So we had a small church in Ireland that was running about uh, small. It was running 80. That's not a bad size, really, for oh, Ireland. It's pretty good. But during COVID, guess what happened? The pastor and all of his children, his wife. All the youngins. And every single member of the church all got COVID. Now, you know, a lot of people died during the first part of that pandemic. And we lost especially. some good leaders. But his church, God healed every single member of the church, including the pastor and his wife. And not only that, but you see, this is what God does when he restores not only was every member of that church brought back to health and able to come back to worship in the church, but they added another 80 people, and now they're running 160. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff that God does. They did it for David and Ziklag. They came back with more booty than the enemy had taken. And what about in Morocco? Do, do we, can we just be out and out and share Jesus with everybody? You know, there are so many ways to bring in the harvest. In Morocco, they do it at home meetings. And they they meet with coffee. And, and they can't meet every time at the same home or they'll be reported to the police and go to jail and whatever. And might uh, lose their children. Might lose their children. But they have to go from house to house. Each time they have to go to a different home to worship. 
So you see, there are always, God always provides ways to restore and to renew. Yes. But we have to have a mindset to receive on, that preach. new mindset of God. <laughs> That's the problem. You know, we need our mindset transformed. Uh, year, some years ago, I said, God, what is the biggest challenge we have in Western Europe? And God says to me, he says, you need to ask people to help you to pray and fast that I can break mindsets. Break the cultural mindsets. Break the mindset of people that think they know religion and they do know something about religion, but they do not know Jesus Christ. And you know that, that that's what Jesus did when he came. People thought that they knew God. Yes. The, the Hebrews, the, the rabbis and the scholars in his day, they thought they knew all about God. And he was going to send a Messiah. He was going to lead a military revolt against they Rome. They had a different mindset. They had the whole wrong mindset. And the first thing Jesus says, you know what you need to do? You need to repent because the real kingdom of God is coming. Amen. And so the, the first problem the Holy Spirit said was you need to get rid of the mindsets of culture and tradition that have bound you in Europe and in Africa and, and really around the world. We have mindsets Imagine that, are, that imagine, are not from God. Imagine those youngins back there, those little ones. Mm -hmm. You have heard stories about Jesus. You've heard stories about David and Goliath and Jonah and the whale and all the different stories in the Bible. But in Europe, do the young people know that, Chris? Many of them don't know Jonah from Adam's cat. <laughs> in other words, they've never even heard a story yeah. about Jesus. Do you see how, how privileged we are? And the Bible says if two or three gather together, you've got more than two or three. You're so blessed. You're so blessed. And you have freedom to worship. You have freedom to allow the spirit to move. Not just move in your heart, but to move in whoever may come through those doors. You're blessed. We don't meet in big groups all the time in Western Europe, do we, babe? No, we have uh, lots of smaller churches. We do have a couple of big ones. But, you know, God can meet you in any size church. That's right. It doesn't matter how big the church is or how small it is. You know, in, in Andorra... Very difficult country, very Catholic, very difficult to, to reach people for Christ and to get them to make a decision. In that church, during the pandemic, they were not allowed to meet in the building. The buildings were all closed in Europe, and, and they were forbidden to come into the building. And they had already put in years building that church, and it was maybe, what, 60 or 70 people. Yeah. And so during the pandemic, every single one of those members stopped going to church. And guess what? When the churches were opened again, they didn't come back. So what would you do, Pastor, if, if that happened to you? This guy, he just got on his knees, just like David. He said, God, I've lost everything. The whole church, the building, everything is gone. What can I do? And God said, go back and get what the enemy has stolen. The battle's not yours. The battle is not <laughs> yours. And so he and his wife began to fast and pray, and they called one or two of, of the people there that were still faithful, and they fasted and prayed. And now they have a whole new church. Uh, a lot of the people didn't come back, but God sent new people. And, and so it's, it's amazing what God will do if we will just take on the mindset of Jesus Christ. But is the Lord still big in Western Europe? Does he really perform miracles? Absolutely. Does, does, he, does he do great things like you hear in Asia or maybe in Africa or in South America? I'll tell you, God is the same God if you will pray and fast, whether you're in Ridgeville or whether you're in France or in Spain or any country in the world, if you will pray and fast, God will meet you right where you are. And they're just like you. Yeah. They have homes. They have children that have left the faith. Or they're just out there on the fence. And they have needs and bills just like you. And it's because of people in America 
that pray and believe in a harvest they can't see with their eyes, but they believe in the spiritual, that God will do something. If they give a dollar, God will use that to help people across another land. Wherever you plant seeds, God promises there's people who plant, there's people who water, and then there's people who see the growth. Well, we've been planting seeds for a a good while. You've been planting them for 40 years or more. I just get the privilege of helping you for the last 11. But those people need your prayers. Those leaders need your prayers because they're believing God for a reset. They're believing that the last three years are behind them and God is going to take us and allow us to see a harvest that the seeds of the past are now going to come up and we're going to see it like never before. I don't know about you, but this white-haired lady is ready to see the harvest. I've heard, I've seen, I know the promises God has given, and I'm ready, and I'm ready to take back what the devil has stole from us. Amen? Amen, amen, come on. Well, you know, I remember God doing amazing things. In, uh, in the different churches we've been in. In Portugal, we, I prayed for a lady in Portugal that had never, she had always had problems having a child and she couldn't have a baby. That's what the doctor said. But with God, anything is possible. And I was just silly enough to believe that the word of God says, if I pray, if I say it in God's name, that God would do it. And I prayed. And then I left with you. And a year later, she had a baby. (laughs) Miracles still happen in Western Europe as well, not just in America. Amen? Amen, amen. And, And you know, getting back to prayer and fasting, this is so important, Pastor. I really appreciate your emphasis on this. That's where we are. When, when God told us just before the pandemic, he said, now, I want you to break your mindsets and get ready for new things. And, and so we prayed and fasted, and, and we just asked God for an outpouring of his spirit. Well, when we had, when well, we came together in Spain from all over Western Europe, from France and, and from Luxembourg and all the different countries, there was such a spirit of revival hanging in the air it was so powerful. What happened during the coffee breaks, honey? We were supposed to stop a little while between sessions. And, you know, people in training sessions were on their knees and on their face before the Lord. It was a powerful move of God. But we had a break. It's time. Everybody have a break. Go get some coffee. Enjoy yourself, you know, etc. And people were being filled with the Holy Ghost trying to have a cup of coffee. That's the kind of revival we need. All of us need that. And God can do it if we pray, if we fast, and we unify what we're praying about. And that's what we did. We unified. We sent out prayer uh, alerts, and we all prayed the same thing, four things or five things, nothing no more. For three months prior to the meeting, we prayed. And one or two days a week, we fasted. And God met us. And there was such an outpouring that the guests that come from America and the guests that came from Germany and the guests that came from other places, they said, this wasn't a conference. This was a God encounter. That's what I want. I want it every time I come into church. I want a God encounter. I want to feel the Holy Spirit. I want to hear the word of the Lord that comes forth. I want to know that I know that I know. Amen? Amen? You see, if my people who are called by my name will hunger, (laughs) hunger. Now, if you get hungry enough, you look for food, don't you? Hunger and thirst. Turn from their wicked ways. 
He's talking about us, folks. He isn't talking about those who don't know Jesus. He's, in that scripture, he's talking about us who are, supposed, who are called by my name. If we'll do all those things, repent. He said, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will heal their lands. That's a familiar scripture. And if we're not careful, no matter where we go to church, we're so familiar with the word of God that it's like old school. Oh, I've heard that before. Oh, yes, that's a good scripture. Yeah, I've, I've read that before. Please be alert to the word. And don't take it as if it's just the word. Oh, they're reading the Bible. They're, what if you didn't have the Bible? When I was in the interior, in the bush, no electricity, no running water. I lived in a mud hut. There was no plumbing. Hey, come on. Grandma and Grandpa's outhouse. Mm -hmm. I had one. There were, they didn't have Bibles. They didn't have a Bible. They, they didn't, they came to my yard so that they could hear the word. Lord have mercy. I never prayed so many times through the day. Never, ever, ever little whip snitch. At six o'clock in the morning when I opened my door, I already had workers there. And I prayed with them before they, they were heathens, but I prayed with them before they went to the fields. And I didn't expect them to do something that I didn't do. So I went to the fields as well. And then when the boys would come, I prayed with them. And then they were fussing. Or I'd stop them and we'd join hands and we'd pray. When I didn't have any money to feed them, I said, come on, boys, let's join hands again and pray because somebody in America has got to send us some money so we can eat. And sure enough, somebody would. And the next few minutes, I'd say, look, guys, look, God answered our prayer. Prayer availeth much. Do you believe God tonight? Do you believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Do you believe that he answers prayer when you call upon him? He said, call upon me. Call upon me. Enter in boldly with your requests. We got to take it by force. The Bible says that the violent take it by force. Violent. Now, I get emotional. He's quiet, but we make a good together because he evens me out. But we can get pretty violent in prayer. And we can lay down a lot of stuff before the Lord. And it's because of you allowing us to come and hear in our heartbeat all we care about is souls Jesus is coming in the fall every morning for about six weeks God woke me up at three o'clock in the morning and downloaded all kinds of things I didn't even want to hear and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and every morning I'd share it with him, and we'd pray over it, and we'd, I'm telling you, hard times are coming. Hard times for this world. You think you're seeing it now. It's coming bad, but he's promised God's people blessings. He's promised to pour out a great harvest for God's people, but we got to get ready we got to shake ourselves and know that who we have is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He can do anything. Don't you dare leave here the same as you came tonight. Not because of me, but because the word has gone forth. It's not your battle. It's his. And he'll take care of you if you hold on to his hand. He will meet the, the people of God's needs but the world is going to look to us for hope, for help, and you have to be prepared. Not just in the spiritual, but in the physical. You need to be prepared. That's, that's what people of God need to do. 
yeah, that means put in a few extra groceries just in case the neighbor comes by and says, I don't have anything. And you'll say, come on in. We've got some groceries and we'll sit here and you can talk to them about the love of Jesus when they come by. I'm telling you, we got to start being more like the early church. We got to get alive again. We've, we've laid dormant too long. Oh, I heard you this morning, Pastor. I heard you. It's heavy on my heart. And one of the words that the Lord gave me, I, I even, I told uh, Chris and I prayed over it. And I finally, after much contemplation, I called uh, and texted our general overseer and shared it with him before I put it out there on Facebook. I'm just telling you, God's God, and he's not changed, and he's still alive, and he's going to help us to see a harvest like we've never seen, and this church is going to be full, brother. You just keep on keeping on. Don't you quit, because the devil's a liar. Amen, amen. But he can't do it by himself. She can't do it by herself. They're the sheep feeding the sheep. That's what they do, and the rest of us bring them in. We bring them in. You bring the youngins. You bring your neighbors. You bring your co-workers. You bring them. And Jesus will touch them because of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. I believe that uh, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 14 through 19, would be helpful right now to understand what God's getting ready to do in 2023. If, if I may, I'd just like to read this to you. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake, I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. In other words, God is getting ready to take what the enemy has prided himself in, what the enemy has thought shows his victory over God's people, and he's going to bring the enemy in the very vessels that they were using against God's people to, to bring them down uh, as fugitives so that they will actually have to run away from their enemy uh, because they were taking pride on themselves. And then in verse 15, he says, I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your king. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcements together, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, stuffed out like a wick. So God is saying, remember who I am. Remember, remember what I did, and remember whenever you are up against the wall and you've got the Pharaoh on the one side getting ready to kill you from the back, and you've got the Red Sea in front of you. Anybody ever been there? You're in a situation you can't go back and you can't go forward. You are blocked in every direction, and you're probably going to, you're about to die. It's so bad. God says, remember, I'm the one that destroyed that army and set you free in that moment. And then God says something really key about the new year and about the time that's coming. Forget the former things. Forget what the enemy has done to you. Do not dwell on the past, all of the hurts, all of the things that you've been through, the disappointments, the times that you've said, where is God? You know, it's about time for God to show up. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Don't you see it? He's doing a new thing. <laughs> I am making a way in the wilderness where you are out in the middle of nowhere, and I think you were in the middle of nowhere for eight years. <laughs> Long time. Out in the middle of nowhere, but God I is making it. a way. God is making streams flow in the land that is waste and without water. And you're seeing it after many years of sowing seeds in Western Europe. Yes. And I believe that we're on the cusp of a revival like we have never seen before in the history of our church. Amen. I believe people are going to be coming to the church and they're going to be knocking down the doors to get in because they're going to be so bewildered by what the, what's going on in the world Amen. today. They're That's going right. to come to the church and say, do you have an answer? And God says, we have an answer. God is doing a new thing. 
Amen. And I believe he's going to do that in Europe, in Africa, yes. and Amen. in Richville, and Amen. in Somerville. Amen. 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 And if you believe that tonight, will you stand with us? Because we want to invite the Lord to come and be in our lives again, restore our thinking, and cause us to have a new mindset and believe again that he can do the impossible, that he can bring whatever, whoever, if we'll believe together. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for this precious church. We thank you, God, for this great man of God and woman who have been appointed to lead this church. We thank you for every single person that's here tonight and those that would be here if they could be. And God, we thank you that you have said forget the things in the past. Forget all of this, the battles and scars and disappointments and hurts that you've had because I'm going to do something new. Oh Lord, help And God, us. we're ready for something new. We're, we're tired of all the old things that have been happening. We're ready for some new things. We're ready, God, for you to do things that we haven't even dreamed of yet. We're ready for you, God, to interrupt our daily lives and our schedules and to do things that we have not imagined. Help us to take time. God, there are people in this church tonight that need a new start this year. Oh, God, God they, they need to, not to go back to dwell on the past, but they need to move forward into the future. God, God, there's people that have lost people that they've loved and, and the, the relationships have been broken and, and financial hardships and, and medical hardships have happened, God, and they need to leave that behind and move on to the new year. And so, God, we thank you that you're the same God that Hallelujah. delivered the people of God from the hand of the Pharaoh and from the dangers of the Red Sea. You, you did the impossible things that nobody could have dreamed of. And you told Moses to do crazy things like raise up your staff and command the sea to part. And, and God, you did things that the mindset of a human being could never fathom and could never understand. And, and God, you're here today to do the same thing. You're here today to tell every one of the people here in this church tonight to raise up your staff. Raise up your staff, and when you look at the sea that is in front of you that's saying you can go no further, and your way is blocked, and you're not going anywhere, you are trapped, and, and the enemy is going to overtake you and take everything away. God says, you lift up your staff, and you believe with me that I'm going to make a way in the wilderness, and I'm going to guide you through what yours lies ahead of you, and no matter how dangerous it appears, no matter how the wind may blow and the waves may rock, no matter what you are looking at, God says, I will make a way in the wilderness. Yes. And that is the scripture tonight that he has given us to take home with us. And Father, we thank you now that you are moving by your spirit. Things that we cannot do, things that we do not know, but you do. Touch the people under the sound of our voice. Yes, Lord. Breathe upon them, Lord. Mm. Refresh their spirit. Jesus, Jesus. Help them to believe the impossible. Lord, I pray that there would be a fresh, new outpouring of your spirit from the back of the building to the front, all the way, every crack, every crevice. God, when people come in this building, they'll feel you and they'll know that they're in a safe place, that they Thank can you, be Lord. refreshed, yes. that they can have a reset in their own hearts, in their own lives. And Lord, we'll go forth from this place like never before. And we'll be charged to touch a world that needs so desperately to have you in their lives. God, use us as the body of Christ. Use us, oh God. Help us to prepare our hearts and our lives that we'll be who you want us to be. And if that's your prayer tonight, will you just lift up your hands now and ask the Lord to pour
pour out on you. Lord Jesus, I need you tonight. Jesus, I Jesus. need you, God. I don't know point. where I am, but I need you. I don't know, God, tomorrow, but you said you've got tomorrow. The Bible says that you're the same yesterday, today, yes, and forever. Jesus. And Lord, every step I yes, take, Lord. every breath I mm. breathe, let me say you. Let me share Jesus. Let me give the love of God to many. And Lord, I pray that this is the prayer for each and every heart in this place. God, use us like never before. I told someone this morning, they were talking about they, they would probably never be like us and travel so many places. And I said, look down at your feet, folks. Look down at your feet. Now draw a circle, an imaginary circle around your feet. You're a missionary. And everywhere you walk, every person you talk to, the store clerk, the postmaster, the drive-in where you get food, everywhere you go, you're a missionary. I was a missionary for many years before I went abroad. Every time I took care of children in children's church, I was a missionary. Because maybe those children wouldn't be there the next Sunday. Your key where God's planted you, be a missionary. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing. An atheist and an unwanted child. And here we stand. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and being able to touch thousands that neither one of us ever thought was possible. You can too believe God for anything. Now, if you need prayer, this altar's open. If you'd like us to help you pray about something, God's in this house. And we invite you to come. If you don't know Jesus, this is a good time to begin. It doesn't matter what we've said. Jesus is here to meet your need. Jesus is here right now. Jesus is here. And he loves you. You see, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I come with my eyes open and I come often to the altar. And if you need Jesus, you come on. Whatever your need is tonight, maybe it's physical. This morning, Jesus touched me. Thank God for Mary. <laughs> she didn't even know, but Jesus did. You see, we've all got the same clothes. We put them on the same way, don't we? And he loves us. He loves us. Oh, he's in this house. Sweet, sweet presence. He's in this house. Honor him tonight, would you? Let's pray for these that have come. Let's just ask God to touch their lives. And it's open for you if you have a need. Come on.
we all have a place to, in the kingdom of God. You may not think that God's paying attention to you or equipped you in a way, but he has. Your own mission field starts at home and it expands from there. We're honored to have these with us today and I'm honored to have our district pastor, my mentor, my lunch buddy. There's got to be something better than Mexican in this place. Amen. I'm going to ask Pastor Mark if he will come and greet you and pray our prayer of dismissal. Speak a word of encouragement to us this year. You've heard a good message. You've been challenged. So tonight I just want to tell you it's a privilege to serve with Charles and Betsy. They, he told me just now he's finishing up seven years the end of this month. I did not it's hard for me to believe. I remember the night I came here and said, this is the guy you need for this church. And I thank God for them, for their kids, for Isaac and Izzy. I, you know, I liked eating lunch with Charles, but Izzy was always fun. <laughs> and I miss that. But you know what? I'm just grateful for good friends and good relationships. And I'm grateful for you. So I'm not preaching, but here's what I want to say to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight and thank you for allowing us to join you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Out in the foyer, you have, there's a table to help further support if there's a book or something that you may want. Uh, please remember them in your prayer. Thank you so much for being here. Enjoy your time. We'll see you back Wednesday night in the house of God.